Welcome to Surf Fishing 101. This is a new series from Surfcasters Journal, demystifying the sport of surfcasting. We have over 30 episodes ready to roll in 2016, and we have from regular contributor to the magazine like Dave Anderson, Lou Caruso, Bill Wetzel, John Skinner, Donnie Musso, Crazy Alberto, myself, Roy Leah, Bill Jacobs, uh, Ralph Voda, we have a lot of guys sharing their knowledge on a basic of surf casting. What we're going to do is we're going to break down everything to a minimum. We're going to talk about one episode, Just Daughters, with Donnie Musso and Bill Wetzel. In one episode, we're going to just talk about how to make leaders. Nothing more than that. No teasers and, you know, how to cast them, just how to make leaders. We got GoPro footage for you. We have aerial footage. We have underwater footage. We even have a night vision for it. The first four episodes will appear in November issue of a Surfcasters Journal. I hope you enjoy what we put together for you. And I think this is really going to be a really nice collection for anyone who's learning how to surf fish. Flashlight, usually I carry three. I carry a, a main flashlight, a spare flashlight on the inside, and a God forbid flashlight. The other two died, which happens to be quite often. Um, surf bag, something solid. It doesn't have to be custom. We will go in what makes a great custom bag in a separate video. But just get yourself a nice bag to start with, with a lot of Velcro or a clip, whatever you find to your liking. Um, obviously, you're going to need something to carry your leaders. A leader wallet, it's a great thing to have. You make your leaders, you store them. Again, you're gonna need 10,000 lures, I'm telling you right now. You're gonna buy one, and three years later, you're gonna look in your house, and you're gonna go like, oh shit, I got too much stuff, like the rest of us do. But we will go into every specific lure. Needlefish is pretty much a straight retrieve. If you want, you give it a, just a, not pulling a rod way back. You just give it a little twitch with the wrist, which breaks the action and makes it go from one side to another. Or you can work it off the bottom, where you drop it down to the bottom and you almost work it like a buck tail. You lift it up, you make a couple turns, two turns, and you give it a slight lift up again and you drop it down. Now on sandy beaches, I recommend that. On on water where you got a lot of rocks and that, like out in Montauk in the rocky area, I don't reckon you'll hang it up and lose it. This Another cast in front of the wave. Try to get a cast behind it. That way you can work your bucktail right away. It's just nice and easy twitch. And I'm in. The reason I'm passionate about a surf belt is because it can literally save your life. The surf belt precludes the water from coming in and filling your waders and getting you wet. Please don't do this. Please do not wear your jacket on the inside of your waders. The jacket is designed to fit over your waders and belt over the jacket. I see a lot of guys with jacket inside of waders and then a belt over it and the water comes over the waders and goes right in. Okay, this precludes the water from going in and you will fall. If you think you're the only guy that is gonna stay dry for the rest of his fishing career, it's not going to happen. You're gonna get knocked on your ass, you're gonna slip, you're gonna trip, you're gonna fall. And this belt will preclude the water from going in. The other reason is, now you can get away with a cheap belt if that's all you're trying to accomplish. As long as it's tight, even a piece of rope will do the job. Colors don't exist at nighttime. You walk around at nighttime, everything you see is black and white. If you can show me a color in the dark of night, you must have some supervision because color doesn't exist with absence of light. Um, until you start getting some moonlight, then some color comes in. Pattern, shade is all you're going to see. All right, there's a couple of different types of actions that we get involved in. Um, one of the ones that's most prevalent here on the East Coast, uh, striper fishermen, like a moderate action rod. And when I talk about different actions, uh, the action on a rod, a faster action rod, 
is going to bend in the top third of the blank. Kind of sucks you have to make these gigantic long casts and only working a plug for the first 10 feet or 20 feet, whatever it is. But sometimes that's just the way the fish set up and you need that long cast to get them. And tonight that's definitely the case. Long casts, first 20 yards, cranks, and there she goes. Nice fish. Nice fish. I like drag pulling. That is nice sound. And what that's going to do is it's going to elicit the plug to dive. So now when I get the plug out there, you'll see that the plug wants to just go under the surface. And you're getting the same action, more or less. But now the plug is down, oh, probably a foot, a foot and a half. And it really is kind of remarkable how much of a difference just that little adjustment can make. And this can be, this can be the key if the fish are keyed in on baits that aren't V-waking on the surface. Or if the fish are just down a little deeper than they, you know, than they will be if they'll to come up and take a plug off the surface. When you come down to a beach, you always want to sight out what's in front of you. All right, we have an incoming tide now, so whatever the, whatever the formation was out there disappeared. But from experience, I, I know that there is nice structure on this beach, not too far, and it's within casting range. So your job is to come down to the beach and watch the tide drop and fish the ebb of the tide constantly to find out where all these little bumps and humps are. 